Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Matt M. And for today's video, I actually really wanted to film a video regarding how to apply for the California CLS license through the website. But today is not that day <laughs> because today uh, the website is actually undergoing maintenance. So they would be, uh, I think, down for four days. So I cannot do that kind of video today. With that being said, I just thought of another video idea. Maybe I should just talk about the requirements that CDPH LFS will ask for. So CDPH LFS is California Department of Public Health Laboratory Field Services. And this is where you apply for your California clinical laboratory science license. Actually, the California Department of Public Health is not asking for much. They're just asking for five requirements. So let's just go with the first one. So the first one is actually a bachelor's degree. Here's a photo of me in 2019 where I graduated. Actually, they just want you to graduate with a degree of either Bachelor of Medical Laboratory Science or Bachelor of Science in Medical Laboratory Science or Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology. Either one of those degrees will be fine because they're pretty much the same. Maybe that's why people are not aware of our fields. We've been changing our name so frequently, which is weird. Maybe the last one will stick. Next requirement that CDPH LFS wants you to have is your transcript and evaluation report. So this is not just your plain old transcript that you get from the university registrar. This is the type of transcript where you actually have to send a sealed copy to California Department of Public Health Laboratory Field services. Freeze frame, I would like to emphasize that your university should send two copies of your sealed transcript. One addressed to CDPH LFS which will be shown on the screen and the other sealed transcript should be sent to the evaluating body of your choice which will be further explained when we resume. Okay, Matt, carry on. So it can be accredited by NACES or ACE, and NACES stands for National Association of Credentials Evaluation Services. And then ACE stands for Association of International Credentials <laughs> Association of International Credential Evaluation. You will send it from your university, a sealed copy to one of the accrediting bodies, and then after they evaluate it, they will send the evaluation report to CDPH LFS, and then they will receive the evaluated transcript to see if the degree you took in the Philippines or any other country is up to par to their standard of education here. If your transcript is for some reason not in English, you have to send a translated version of your transcript translated into English, obviously. The expenses that I paid for during this whole evaluation of transcript thing is actually really expensive. Don't follow me because I did put all the expiration dates within my planner, which is my pro tip on my first video but I overlooked it because the moment I went here in California, I was dragged into multiple trips, which I am not angry about, but it did kind of drifted me off to the actual reason why I was here, which is to work. I spent roughly $400, which should regularly be $200. I expedited everything, meaning I rushed all my documents and data to be transferred from the Philippines towards the accrediting body where I had mine accredited by one of the organizations under NASIS was CARI. I will put a link down below on the accrediting body that I chose. I'm not biased towards any of the accrediting bodies but that's the route that I knew of as of that time. So going back to the point, give yourself a leeway of at least one month regarding transporting your transcript from the area where you graduated in my case it was the Philippines to the evaluating body from the evaluating body to CDPH LFS that is the entire route your transcript had to go to so that was a long process okay let's go to the next requirement so the next requirement is actually the training and or experience so California is actually requiring you to have a one-year internship training in my opinion I think this is the fastest route you can take because this is the route that I took I trained in the Philippines in one of the hospitals affiliated with my school for a year so that the moment I get here in California it will be smooth sailing for me but if you weren't aware during your internship that you have to take one year so that you can work in California don't fret because they actually are also allowing people with one year work experience so by work experience this means that you should have a CLS 
Stella's work experience with a complete rotation in all departments of the laboratory except histopathology. Histopathology here in the United States is a separate field where it needs a separate license. I know it's included in our scope in the Philippines but here in California it's a different field but if you're wanting to be the CLS generalist like me then that is what you'll need. So for the proof that they will be asking regarding the internship or work experience if you did complete that one year internship rotation the official letterhead of your verification of training should be signed by your internship coordinator or if you completed that one year work experience then you will need the official letterhead of the place where you are working with the signature of the lab director i know lab director sounds like a fancy word but it's actually just the chief medical technologist within your hospital laboratory the verification of training or work experience should include the starting dates of when you first started working or interning and the end date of your internship or work experience. Now on to the fourth requirement. So this would be the only examination you will take, the certification exam. You should be certified by one of the certifying bodies which I'm pretty sure you are familiar with because I touched the certifying bodies in the first video that I made. I will put a card up above so that you can watch that too. Either you can take the ASCP or ASCPI. The only difference between ASCP and ASCPI is where you graduated because if you graduated within the United States then you would be certified as an ASCP and if you graduated outside the United States like me where I graduated in the Philippines then you will be certified by ASCPI but they are only one certifying body. By the way if you're planning to take the ASCP or ASCPI I have an in-depth walkthrough on how to apply for the ASCPI I will put a card up above so that you can know how to apply for the ASCPI. You won't feel alone. <laughs> <laughs> you are not alone. We will go through that application process together. Watch my video, please. <laughs> I will insert a B-roll regarding where you can send your verification that you actually pass your ASCP because you will not print your results and you will not send it to them. You will actually press the button on the website of ASCP, hover through the view results page, and then once you see your results, there would be a third party verification button right there. You will press that and then you will send that to California Department of Public Health. And if I am not mistaken, this costs $17. And you can also be certified by American Medical Technologists. And the third certifying body is AAB, which is the American Association of Bioanalysts. I am not familiar with the last two certifying bodies. You can just take one of the certification exams, taking multiple certification exam is overkill but if you do want that route because I know people who actually did that <laughs> uh, then it's really up to you but exams are expensive <laughs> plus maintaining your credentials is expensive too CE credits are not cheap <laughs> for the final requirement that CDPH LFS would be requiring is the California quiz this is the most asked question for me within the videos that I took because everyone's asking how hard is the state licensure exam but honestly uh, CDPH LFS does not ask you to take a licensure exam they are asking you to be certified by one of the certifying bodies so that is the major exam you will take that is within the scope of our field and this California quiz is more regarding the um, let's just say it's the medtech laws and bioethics of California they will provide you a PDF on what to study regarding the California quiz and then they will ask you to take a 10 item quiz you have to score an 8 out of 10 yes it's just 10 items I know you're shocked but that is what they are requiring everything I said would be based out of their current rules and regulations within the website as of today those are the five requirements regarding the cdph lfs and it won't be a mat m video without a recap so i will recap everything so the five requirements that they will be asking is a bachelor's degree and then transcript and evaluation report the third one they would be asking of you is your verification of internship and or work experience the fourth thing they would be asking of you would be the certification exam and then the fifth one would be California quiz. So whether you're applying for the Philippine boards or you're applying for the ASCP or you're applying for CDPH LFS, 
you should plan everything because once these applications expire then that's when your money gets wasted because you have to reapply and then you have to pay again so plan wisely period <laughs> don't forget to give this video a like and please smash that subscribe button for me and then don't forget to wash your hands and i will see you on the next video and by the way happy memorial day bye